Okay, welcome. So I'm gonna be trying to explain uh, mathematical functions in like the most basic way that I can possibly explain it. <laughs> okay, so intuitively, you can kind of think of it like a machine. So here I have a drawing of a... Okay, you can think of it like an airport machine, I guess, like where they check security or whatever. So let's call this a transformation machine. So transformation... Okay, it doesn't fit. Machine. There. Okay. So we know that whenever something passes this machine, it transforms into something else. Okay, so let's try using a box here. Okay. Now let's label the box X. Uh, it will go through the machine. This is a conveyor belt, by the way. <laughs> okay. And when it exits the machine, it comes out as a Y. Okay. So we know that something happened to the X box in this machine that made it into a Y box. So how does this relate to mathematical functions? Um, now we can use uh, actual numbers instead of uh, whatever machine we were using earlier. So we can try calling this machine now. We can label it as 2x plus 1, okay? And when we want to put in a box this time, so earlier, remember, we called this our x box. It's still our x box, but this time I want to put in an actual number. So let's say I put in a 2. Okay, so when this goes into the machine, now we can kind of visualize what happens to this x box, okay? So we can replace our x here with whatever value is here, okay? So this is 2 times 2 plus 1. And then out goes the y box, okay? Now, if you remember earlier, our x became our y based on whatever happened inside here. But now we can know what happened inside here, which is 2 times 2 plus 1. So we can kind of know that our y box now will have a value of 5. Okay, I've moved the drawing just a little bit, uh, so we have enough space to write. Um, so the form that you're used to in class is probably f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. When you see this, you're basically just defining your machine. So we know that the function f takes in x as an input, and then outputs whatever y value. And this just shows the rule of what happens inside that machine. Okay. In our example earlier, we said that f, which is the same machine, took in 2 as an input. So this was our x box, right? And this output that 2 times 2 plus 1, where we replaced x with 2. Okay. And this became 5. Another good way of visualizing how a function looks like would be by sketching it on a graph, okay? So for that, we use a Cartesian plane, which is kind of like a map of coordinates. The coordinates being your inputs and outputs. So it essentially shows you some sort of picture of all of the inputs that you put, which are all of the x's, and how the y's would look like. So what does that mean? For example, we can fill up our x and y's here. So if our x is 0, then we look at this function, right? We replace this x with 0, you end up with 1. So we can continue. If we put x as 1, this entire expression will become 2 plus 1, which is 3. And if we put x as 2, this becomes 5. If we put x as 3, this becomes 7. And if we put x as 4, this becomes 9. So we can actually plot the first three points on the graph. So let's try plotting these. We see that the x is at 0. So if this line is our x-axis and if this line is our y-axis, then we know that x is at 0. So that would be here. And y is at 1. So we get this point. Okay. Next, if x is at 1 y would be at 3. So we count 1, 2, 3. So it's here. Then if x is at 2, y would be 5. Then it would be over here. 
So this is 2, right? And this is 5. And so our graph would kind of look like that. Okay, and this is the sketch of this function. Now you can keep going with these other points. You'd need a bigger Cartesian plane for that, but that's essentially how it looks like. Okay, hopefully now you have like a better intuitive understanding of what functions essentially are and like the very basics of it. Um, in the future, you're gonna encounter much more difficult functions like the ones that you see here um, and how to manipulate them, different types of functions, stuff like that, and how to graph all of these difficult functions. But for now, hopefully you have a better understanding and to solidify it, let's try doing an example. Um, we have this new function here. And what I want you to do is try to fill out the table of values like I did earlier. Now you can use any x that you want. Try to stick with smaller numbers so that it's easier. Then I want you to sketch this function with any five values that you want. So let's try that. You can pause the video, then I'll run through it real quick after. Okay. So just for symmetry's sake, I'm going to try to do this uh, with negative numbers. So let's try negative 2 as the x, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so first, negative 2, all squared, would be positive 4. Now you minus 1 that, the y would be 3. Negative 1 squared minus 1 is 0. And 0 squared minus 1 is negative 1. 1 squared minus 1 is also 0. And 2 squared minus 1 is 3. Okay, now we try plotting this. So first, we do x is negative 2. So that's around here. And y is positive 3. So we take this. Uh, next is x is negative 1, so negative 1, and y is 0, so it looks like this. x now is 0, and y is negative 1, so it should be here. Next is x is 1, and y is 0, which would be here. And lastly, 2 as the x would be 3 as the y, here. And so you kind of end up with this sort of shape. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, the line is supposed to touch the points, but <laughs> okay, let's just make it a little bigger there. So anyway, this is called a parabola, and you'll encounter this whenever you see like squares like this. But yeah, hopefully you understand uh, much more about functions now, and I'll see you in the next video when we do a little more complicated uh, operations with these functions.